بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. This is our first uh, episode of reading the actual text of بغية المتتبع لحل ألفاظ روض المربع in which we will be focusing more on روض المربع while borrowing some of the uh, comments or some of the important uh, parts of Bogiat al Mutatabi, which is the explanation. If you haven't watched the first episode of this series, please go back and watch it first because it tells you more about the book, the author and other things that you need to know about this type of books or the, the category to uh, which this book belongs. In my uh, version, which is uh, uh, the version of uh, the Ministry of Al Awqaf in uh, Qatar, um, on page 453, it says Al Khatima. And as I referred before to, the, uh, to, to this, it is the last chapter or the last part of the book, Al Khatima. This is the last part. في زيارة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وما يتعلق به وفي زيارة أبي بكر الصديق وعمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنهما. So this last part or this خاتمة this conclusion is about the visiting of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and visiting the two companions أبي بكر وعمر بن الخطاب أبي بكر الصديق وعمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنهما. In this version. We have a lot of annoying comments from the editor, and he, in the introduction, told gave us gave us a heads up that he will annoy us. He didn't say I will annoy you, but he said that he will be commenting on a lot of things that he didn't like in what he called the aqidah of the author. So these are matters of aqidah. Taban, we are disregarding his comments completely. We might have this another series. I will never do this, but we can have another series dedicated exclusively to the problem with his comments. Anyways, this is an an honourable topic. This is a topic that is full of barakah, inshallah, and let's try to enjoy it without the the the, the without being ruined by paying any attention to the comments of of uh, of the editor on the very on the very topic of uh, of of the author he had a comment so imagine imagine the rest the author says yustahabbu liman faragha min أفعال حجه وقصد الرجوع إلى وطنه أي محل, إقام أي محل إقامته أو غيرها أن يقصد المدينة الشريفة المنورة النبوية المنيفة لزيارة المسجد النبوي الأطهر لما قد ورد عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه and he will mention the evidence so what he says is basically and briefly and uh, again I remind you to listen to the first dars because it tells you that I'm not going to read this the same way I read it in the durus because this is not a dars this is like a 70% of what the real dars is yes hmm. it is recommended for someone who has finished the, pract the, the rituals of Al-Hajj to head to, to go to to head to the Medina of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Medina Al-Nabawiyya Al-Sharifa Al-Munawwara if now he is, if he has the intention to go home he should go first and visit the Medina of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Two pages of comments, three, three, four pages of comments from the editor. Let's forget about them. And then he mentioned evidences and then he said, Wal Qabr al-Azim. 
So now it's recommended to go before going home to go visit the Prophet and to visit and to, to head to Antaqsida to intend in your heart that you are going to the Medina and to intend in your heart that you are going to the grave of the Prophet the great grave Al-Anwar that is full of Noor Now, and he mentioned evidences and he mentioned hadith. Some of them is weak, some of them is not. Regardless, the, I can I can tell you more about these hadith. But regardless, this is the madhab. The man is telling us that he lied upon position of the Hanbali madhab. This is what Ahmed and Hanbal stated in some of his narrations. Which narration? Tell us which narration. Not important now. Let's continue with him. My main focus is him. Hmm. While doing a lot of istighfar on the way. While saying astaghfirullah al azim or while repenting and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness on the way. Kathrati al istighfari fi tariqi. وَتِلَاوَةِ وَكَثْرَةِ تِلَاوَةِ أَيْ قِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ الْقُرْآنِ While reciting Al-Qur'an A lot of Al-Qur'an A lot of Al-Tahleel Wal-Tasbih Wal-Tahmeed Wal-Takbir While doing a lot of Al-Adhkar يعني saying لا إله إلا الله سبحان الله الحمد لله الله أكبر والصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كصلاة التشهد and to do a lot of الصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم on the way because you are visiting him صلى الله عليه وسلم it is a good occasion to do الصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم all the time it's recommended it is recommended all the time so now he is telling us that it is recommended and the dhikr is always recommended and now he is telling us that it is recommended. Now you have to understand that in usul al-fiqh we say recommendation, same thing, dislike, al-istihbab wal karah. They are, they belong to something that we call al-mutashakik, al-mutafawit. There are degrees of al-istihbab, degrees of al-karah. So one thing in one time can be recommended and it becomes more recommended which means in another time or another occasion or another in another state in another way from from a, from a specific person in a specific place it becomes more recommended which means that the recommendation which is a command to do something becomes emphasized becomes emphasized hmm. this means that on your way there it becomes emphasized to say Salah ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I just want to remind you and to remind myself, but you in particular. I studied a lot. You. You who haven't studied like me. Like al-mashayikh. Huh. You are muqallid. You do not talk in the language of al-mujtahideen. It's not your right to ask for evidences. And even if we allow you to ask, we do not oblige the receiver of the question, the mujtahid, the shaykh, the scholar, the alim, the faqih, to give you evidences. This is your evidence. What you hear here, is your evidence. This is the Hanbali Madhab. Yeah. If you're not the follower of the Hanabila, you'll benefit in a different way to know that this is what the Hanabila say. He says that you do the Salah, Salah al Nabi Sallam, the same way you do it in a Tashahud, yani in a Salah. Yani you say, According to the Hanabila, this is the, the, the chosen way. Other ways are fine. Every, all, all the ways are fine as long as they come from a sunnah. 
but this is the the most like preferred way or the, the, like, I do not, I want to say the most authentic I uh, but this doesn't explain what I need to say here I want to say instead that the one that is chosen by the majority of our imma is Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid this is the way that we do it in the prayer. However, we do not include a siyada in the prayer, in the tashahud. We do not say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And this is because of things that are related to the prayer and how restricted the Hanabila are in the dhikr that they include in the prayer in the dua that they allow in the prayer because they fear that anything that does not belong to the prayer might affect the validity of the prayer. I'm not say, saying that if you say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad this invalidates the prayer. I'm telling you the Hanbali philosophy in choosing or validating or authenticating what they do in the prayer, what they say, the type of the dua they allow and other things. This is the wording of the hadith. What I have said now is the wording of the hadith. The qiyas of the madhab, in my opinion, dictates that we include a siyada to say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad because this is done outside the salah. On your way to Al Madina, in, in on your way to the Prophet وسلم, or to the grave of the Prophet. So you include the siyada in that case. And it is recommended because it is among the general command of respecting him. قال ويستحب أن يغتسل قبل دخولها وأن يتطيب وأن وأن يتطيب في بدنه وثيابه. It is recommended to do al-ghusl before entering al-Madina. And I'm telling you, according to the relied upon position of the madhab, and it might come later, it is recommended to do al-ghusl also when you visit the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I will talk again about it when we talk about visiting the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To do ghusl, this is recommended. At-tatayyub, to put, to wear some perfume. Hmm. Fi badanihi wa thiyabihi, in your body and in your, and in, in, on your clothes. Hmm. And to wear the best of your clothes. The most expensive, the best, the best thing you have. Hmm. ثم يقدمها بسكينة ووقار. طبعا to enter the Medina in a calm way, in a الوقار, in a يعني in dignity and respect and, and in a calm way as we as we say. ويقول عند دخوله when he enters the Medina there are rituals for doing these things. You see, not the Wahhabi detachment as if as if there is nothing there as if it is just uh, let's not ruin it for ourselves let's continue and to say when he enters bismillahi wa ala millati rasulillah say bismillahi wa ala millati rasulillah Yani, I am on the religion, I am on the deen, milla, of the Prophet We will continue what to do next after entering the Medina of the Prophet after saying this, Bismillahi wa millati Rasulillah. We will continue, inshallah, in the next uh, episode. Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'la wa sallillahum ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.